Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. It is 9.30 p.m. here in Calgary, Alberta, Wednesday night, October the 13th. I'm happy to be here. This is a Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. 30-minute live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And, um, you know, I have a, the link in the chat room that I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to my shows. I appreciate it. Um, I thought tonight, really, I was looking at an article from the WHO, the World Health Organization, regarding uh, Mental Health Day, the WHO's uh, World Health Organization's Mental Health Day, uh, which was October the 10th, um, 2010, which was on Sunday. And I did a sort of a special show on that, and then I sort of continued on Monday night talking about that. But tonight, I want to look at another article from the WHO, the World Health Organization, regarding child maltreatment. And um, I want to do another special show next week to finish up the top, the uh, talking about the, the uh, Mental Health Day, 2010, because that's really worth looking at. But I think it's it's more than what we can do in half an hour. It'll take quite a few shows to do that. So I'm going to do a special sh- another show this weekend. So what I thought we'd talk about tonight really is is so important to me. Uh, it's important to all of us uh, who are advocating against child abuse and and you know trying to stop child abuse to talk about the whole issues of child maltreatment. And this is from the WHO, the World Health Organization. Uh, this was posted and put out um, in August 2010. It's very current, and it's fact sheet number 150. So you can get this at www.who.who.int forward slash media center forward slash uh, forward slash fact sheets and then forward slash FS150. Um, and you can just type in their child maltreatment like go through and search their articles and whatnot. Fact sheet number 150 from the World Health Organization, child child maltreatment. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I'm not a professional counselor or therapist. I don't hold any certificates in those areas. You know, I'm just a private citizen paying to do my shows. Um, I'm uh, an advocate standing up to, you know, to say, hey, we need to stop child abuse. We need to, we need to, to fight for child rights, you know. I was studying at MRU here in Calgary and um, couldn't afford to go any longer. But I'm in between courses. I consider the fact that I'll probably go back at some point and finish my the, finish my courses and, and and you know work towards my degree. But right now I just couldn't afford to go, and uh, just too many things came up, and so I haven't been able to go. But I continue to study and sh- just continually looking at information and sharing what I find is very helpful and useful uh, that I find. So. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So if you're a young person under the age of 18, I ask that you have someone listen to the show with you, an adult, because uh, there's a lot of adult content on my shows, and I just think, you know, I don't know how young the people are who are listening to my show, so you might want to have an adult listen with you so they can help you decide whether you should be listening. And everyone has to listen at their own discretion because uh, the topics of abuse, you know, are very sensitive, and a lot of people, you know, just are really uncomfortable with the topic of abuse. And you have to know what's good for you to listen to, and you have to know what will trigger you if you're a survivor um, that could possibly sort of set you off and, and send you, you know, in, on your backward in your healing journey, which you don't want. And so you have to know where you're at. If you're safe and comfortable enough to listen to the show, that's great. But if not, turn the show off. You won't be hurting my feelings at all. So we're going to get right into this article here, World Health Organization Child Maltreatment. And the... Um, and they have some great information here. Key facts, and it says approximately 20% of women and 5 to 10% of men report being sexually abused as children, while 25 to 50% of all children report being physically abused out of all, however many they did the study on, right? That, that's horrible, or that actually, you know, came forward to to give that information, right? Consequences of child maltreatment include impaired lifelong physical and mental health, uh, and the social and occupational outcomes can ultimately slow a country's economic and social development. Preventing child maltreatment before it starts is possible and requires a multi-sectoral approach. This is what the main goal is, you know. It's all about stopping the abuse before it happens. Uh, it, there's a lot of people out there, thank God, who are in, involved in secondary tertiary prevention, which is, you know, after the child's been abused, you know, then they have to step in, whether it's it's, it's therapists, doctors, uh, uh, foster homes, group homes, um, special needs children who have to go to special, you know, group homes, um, people who work with children, you know, counselors and um, child psychotherapists, doctors, police officers, social care workers, um the court system, you know, everybody involved, you know, after after a child's been abused is secondary tertiary prevention. But what we're trying to do is stop child abuse, right? So 
So that's the main thing. If we could stop child abuse before it even happens, well, then we wouldn't have the need for any of this, and we could all move on and do something else, thank God. But sadly enough, these poor kids out here are going to be abused, and so this is ridiculous. It's all about education. It is all about awareness. It's all about watching out for the kids in your own families, in your own lives to make sure they're not being abused. It's about reporting child abuse when you know it's happening. It's about reporting child abuse if you suspect it's happening. It's about uh, looking out for the children. You know, in your neighborhood, you see a small little toddler running around by themselves, and, you know, that that should be a cue. There's something wrong. Little little toddlers and babies shouldn't be out running around by themselves. And, um, and people think, oh, well, nothing bad could happen in our neighborhood. I want to think again, because bad things happen in every neighborhood. So, you know, you're not excluded from that anywhere where you live. And I know lots of people like to think that they are. And lots of people like to think that within their own homes, oh, this would never happen in my home. Well, one out of three girls, this is a fact in North America, they've done the studies, and it's it's just a national statistics everywhere you go. One in three girls, one in, in six or seven boys will be abused sexually in some way under the age of 18 whether it's unwanted sexual touching, um, you know, exploitation, molestation, rape, you name it. Um, one in three girls, one in six or seven boys, right, depending on what stats you look at. So very, very sad and shouldn't be happening to any child, not one. But sadly enough, one in three girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused in some way under the age of 18. Uh, horrible, absolutely horrible. And it does happen in people's homes. This is where it's happening. 90 to 95% of abuse occurs within the home. And the other 5 to 10% is a stranger. So, you know, parents are always warning their children about stranger danger, which they need to do. Um, but there's all this, this uh, you know, your family's safe, but stranger danger. But the family's not always safe. And you don't know who within your own family has the, could possibly abuse your child. So, you know, you can't run around living in fear and suspecting everybody of being an abuser. What you have to do is learn how to keep your children safe. And there are tons and tons and tons of resources out there for people right now who have children uh, to learn how to keep them safe, how to keep your family safe from the people within your own family. Right? There's ways that you can do it without hurting family members, you know, uh, without making them look guilty before they, you know what I mean? There's ways, if, if you limit uh, one adult, one child relation, uh, uh, time together and you will limit a lot of child sexual abuse. Um, sadly enough, you know, some people just can't control themselves. They get a child alone and uh, they just can't control themselves and they just think they should be allowed to use them sexually. And it's really pathetic and really sad, but it's so true. Grandmas and grandpas are doing it. Uh, parents are doing that. Uh, siblings are doing that. Cousins, aunts and uncles, you name it. Uh, lots and lots of family members are doing it. You know why? 90 to 95% of abuse happens within the home. And it's generally somebody the child knows or somebody the child trusts a family friend, a close family friend or something, right? So it's very important that parents know this and get get the education on how to keep your children safe. And it says, uh, key facts, effective prevention programs support parents and teach positive parenting skills. Ongoing care of children and families can reduce the risk of maltreatment reoccurring and can minimize its consequences. So ongoing care of children and families can reduce the risk of maltreatment reoccurring. So that's right. And that's the thing, you know, they need better programs in place where First time, you know, uh, CPS or DHS or any of the Child Protective Services has to get involved because there's been either neglect or child abuse or some form of maltreatment in the home. Um, they should never, ever uh, leave that child again in the care of the people that that had the report made against them until they can prove that they can look after those children. So sad enough, there's no resources. There's not enough resources. There's not enough people. There's not enough programs. And this is in North America, where $104 billion is being pumped out annually in the United States alone uh, to stop child abuse. And, of course, these programs obviously just aren't working. There's not enough, you know, uh, for the amount of children that are being abused and the amount of people in, on the planet. You know, it's so sad but true. There's not enough. And thank God for the people that are out there that are doing it. Um, I'm so thankful for them every day. Child maltreatment and neglect that occurs to children under 18 years of age. It includes all types of physical and or emotional illness. harm to the child's health, survival, development, or dignity in the context of a relationship of responsibility, trust, or power. Exposure to intimate partner violence is also sometimes included as a form of child maltreatment. And um, this is... Um, you know, it's just, it's so sad, you know what I mean, that so many people, 
won't get help within a family. They know that there's abuse going on and they know there's small children in the home and yet people just want to turn a blind eye and pretend it's not happening and so many people just don't want to get involved because it's uh, maybe the, the the fear is there, the danger, their their lives might be threat might be threatened or whatever. So abusive people are abusive people, that's all there's to it. So um there's so many reasons why it, it goes on, it's allowed to continue on, but it's so sad that children are stuck in homes where there's a lot of domestic violence, a lot of you know, intimate partner violence and and abuse, you know, and they shouldn't have to live like that. And no no child deserves to live like that. The scope of the problem. I'm just reading right from this webpage, www.who.who.int. Um, and you can go there too and, and read along with me. The scope of the problem. It says child maltreatment is a global problem with serious lifelong consequences. There are no reliable global estimates for the prevalence of child maltreatment around the globe, right? Data for many countries, especially low and middle income countries, are lacking. Well, there's just the systems are not in place to, you know, to 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 record this type of stuff, right? In many countries, um, you know, so it's hard enough getting an accurate number in, in North America. You just can't because not all rebu- abuse is reported, and sometimes it's mis misreported. It's not reported correctly. Estimates depend on for in, they list uh, the the. Uh, to list four things here. The definitions of child maltreatment used, that because everybody has a different definition for child maltreatment and abuse, right? And even within everyone's own mind in society, everybody thinks of abuse is uh, one person's idea of what abuse is um, it might be completely different than the next guy's, you know? What my idea of abuse would be, would somebody else would be like, oh, that's not abuse, that's just discipline, you know? Um, but, you know, to me, anytime you, any, uh, anyone becomes abusive and maybe I'm going to I'm going to do a show actually pretty soon coming up here on what abusive means right a lot of people don't quite understand the the, co- the correlation between abuse and abusive behavior uh that's what abuse is it's it's subjecting somebody to abusive behavior which causes can cause physical harm whatever that abuser decides to do it's a choice it's a choice they make, and uh, they decide they choose to injure their children, wh- whatever way they choose to do it. Um, they choose they choose to do it. It's a choice they make, right? Abusers, uh, abuse is always a choice, and that's why it's so so pathetic, and um, and it can be stopped every time. It's 100% preventable. That's what's so, so pathetic about child abuse. It is 100% preventable if people would just stop abusing children. We. <laughs> This is how stupid this is. This, this is how, this is why I get very, you know, I try not to get too frustrated because it just makes for a bad show. But the thing is, and, and, you know, getting mad doesn't get anywhere, right? I mean, getting mad is, you know, I mean, sometimes you get a little bit uptight. That's, that's me mainly. Sometimes I'm just a little bit uptight about the whole thing. But, you know, getting mad is not really going to solve the problem. Getting proactive is, and that's the whole issue. But um, it, it is dumb. It's, up, it's so dumb that that the whole issue is just because people will not stop abusing their children. Now, how crazy is that? It's it's absolutely crazy. Um, it also depends on the type of child maltreatment studied. It depends on the coverage and qual- quality of official stat- statistics. And it depends on the coverage and quality of surveys that request self-reports from victims, parents, or caregivers. So that's why it's, it's difficult to study, because it just depends on all this stuff. Nonetheless, international studies reveal that approximately 20% of women and 5 to 10% of men report being sexually abused as children, while 25 to 50% of all children report being physically abused. And additionally, many children are subjected to emotional abuse, sometimes referred to as psychological abuse and to neglect. And actually, neglect and, and, and emotional abuse is highest on the list, really. Uh, emotional abuse comes along with every other form of abuse. There's emotional abuse. When there's, when there's physical abuse, there's going to be emotional, psychological abuse because it's very damaging for a child. Uh, it's not only physically damaging, it's damaging to the very core. You know, they're they're being attacked physically, so um, it, it causes a lot of um, issues with the child emotionally and psychologically. And, and anyone, you know, I don't know if anybody out there has ever been attacked. Have, has it, I mean, I wish I could see some hands, you know, if I could see like a crowd of people who would be listening to my show and just say, have, have any of you actually been assaulted at any time in your life? And if it, if you, were you under the age of eighteen when it happened, and was the was the perpetrator was the person who assaulted you um, an adult, or was it someone your own peer, like your own age? And you know, it'd be quite interesting to see how many hands were raised, um, because it's not funny to be assaulted by by an adult when you're a child like that. 
Um, it doesn't matter whether it's your parent or, or who it is. Um, it's very, very scary to be assaulted physically. And I'm speaking from experience because I grew up being assaulted by my mom physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically assaulted by her, and sexually assaulted by one of my brothers. And, uh, you know, this is the whole issue. You know, abuse is very scary to to deal with for children. And people just think it's a joke, like, oh, well, you know, I got a spanking when I was younger. And it's like, well, children know the difference between spankings and abuse. <laughs> you bet. If you if you spanked a child one time and then you abused them another time, they would be like, okay, that was a spanking, that's abuse. Because there's a direct difference between just getting a little smack on the butt and uh, and being uh, assaulted, physically uh, beaten and, you know, kicked around or punched, uh, slapped, kicked, bitten, you know, um, stabbed or whatever, right? It, it's very, very serious, and it's it's hard to get over, you know, when you have a, especially when there's repeat, repeat when it's a repeated cycle, and the, uh, the whoever the abuser is, the especially if it's an adult and it's your parent, um, it repeatedly assaults you, right, in any way, uh, whether it's verbally, physically, psychologically, sexually. If they keep doing it, it becomes very, very hard on the child because they love their parents and most likely. And uh, they don't quite know why they why they're being treated that way. Are they that bad and that unlovable that their parents would treat them that way? It's very psychologically damaging. You bet it is. Not only that, but just the the, uh, the attack itself. Like you know, if you ever read uh, or or actually, it's a good idea to read up on um, people's accounts of, of especially w- women and men who have been sexually assaulted by another adult. These would be adults being sexually assaulted by another adult. The fear and the and, and the trauma that goes along with it. Well, can you imagine being a child and being uh, sexually assaulted and physically assaulted like that? Um, you know, it's just that much worse because children can't, their minds don't understand. They don't. They can't even cope with it. So it's really hard on children. I hope people would sort of try to put themselves in these children's shoes when they think about this. We're not talking. We're not talking about a a little tap on the butt just because they're misbehaving. We're talking about a, a physical. Um, attack, which really is a psychological and emotional attack as well, because it, it does attack the child's psyche. Even if there's physical abuses, it's still going to attack their psychological well-being as well. It says every year there are an estimated 31,000 homicide deaths in children under 15, and this number underestimates the true extent of the problem, as a significant proportion of deaths due to child maltreatment are incorrectly attributed to falls, burns, drowning, and other causes. Well, that's just it. A lot of abuse gets reported as accidents, right? Things that you know were not perpetrated by somebody. Because so many times parents will kill their children and they'll say, oh, well, they fell down the stairs. Because what they'll do is they'll push them down the stairs and, and the child dies. But they'll just say, oh, the child fell. Or they'll they'll burn the child and they'll say, oh, the child per- pull, pulled down a pot of water on themselves and bur- hot boiling water on themselves and burned themselves. Or, you know, they'll drown the child and then say, you know, oh, no, my my child drowned. So many um, child maltreatment and abuse cases, are uh, deaths, are actually listed as accident. And it's sad but true. So many are still missed, you know. Back in the old days, you know, it would have been easy. But nowadays with all the um, the work that the that these, um, I don't know what you'd call them, but, you know, the people that do the, the uh, autopsies and whatnot, they... You know they know what to look for now for abuse, but even still, some of it gets through as being an accident when it's actually a uh, murder. And so the uh, the person who the the murderer it walks free. So sad. And then they probably have more kids and kill them too, right? Um, and, and many times that's the case. They do actually do that. And sometimes there's parents that have ten kids and like seven or eight of them will die from these accidents. <laughs> and it's like okay, so there's three left and seven are gone and. Um, you know, you just you, you just wonder why the, the they weren't checked into because how could you have seven children die from accidents in your home? There's just no way. You know what I mean? But this is the, the kind of stuff that have, has happened and does happen. This is in armed conflict and re- refugee settings. Girls are particularly vulnerable to sexual violence, exploitation, and abuse by combatants, security forces, members of their communities, aid workers, and others. And so that's another issue, you know, around the world, because this is the WHO, the the World Health Organization. So they're talking on a worldwide global scale. They're not talking North America or, you know, Central America or South America or, or, you know, Africa or Asia. They're talking the world, right? So 
they go into a little bit more into what's happening around the world, which that's how I kind of, you know, I do study international community development. That's what I was studying in school and uh, international, ch- uh, you know, child rights, right, worldwide child rights and um, youth justice. So that's what my, you know, my main uh, studies were. And so, you know, I study a lot of this on my own time, but I tend to bring out more domestic issues like North American, Canadian domestic um, issues within our own country regarding child abuse because I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. And we're working, we are really a worldwide not-for-profit 501c3 organization because we, anybody who wants access to our information like pamphlets and whatnot, we'll send them out to them um, anywhere around the world like so we can possibly get them to an address and people around the world can access our website. So, you know, we consider ourselves to be kind of out there for everybody around the world. But, um, you know, wow. I'd hopefully eventually we could have our our website translated into another you know languages and whatnot to be great um and and you know hopefully we'll go worldwide but right now we're focusing on north america and um so i spend most of my time talking about that but i actually do a lot of studies about what's going on around the world and mainly in afghanistan and africa so um yeah, I mean, I, I study the worldwide issues on, on child maltreatment, child rights, and whatnot. But it, it's actually it's so sad, man, that this is this is ridiculous. It's 2010, and we're still treating our children and families barbarically, and there's just no reason for it. There's help out there for people. Back in the old days when people thought it was okay to club your wife and, and kill your children, um, you know, you couldn't help people for, you know, you couldn't help the fact that people were just ignorant and, you know, they didn't know but now everybody knows it's wrong, and there's all kinds of help for people in North America, and yet people are still doing it out of sheer ignorance. You know, they just want to be, I guess, they just want to continue on the cycle. They lived in that cycle, so hey, why not perpetuate it? And that's what happened in my family. It was just perpetuated. It was uh, the cycle of abuse, right? Well, I, I mean, I stopped it, but I don't have any children. I'd like to think that I would have stopped it, but um, there were people in my family that did and people in my family that didn't. And so, you know, this is the thing, the cycle of abuse just goes on one generation to the to the next. And if people don't try to get some help and learn how to behave themselves properly in a relationship and how to treat their children properly and, and raise them up and, and teach them properly, you know, this is going to continue on. So it is all about education. People like to think it's not, but it is. It, it is at the very core, at its very heart and, and core, child abuse is about education. People ha- are just so ignorant, and they really need to get, uh, they need to wake up and, and co- you know, and, and and join the rest of us, you know, and and try to better themselves and be a better person on this planet, right? But unfortunately, there's a lot of sick people out there. So it says consequences of maltreatment. Um, child maltreatment causes suffering to children and families and can have long-term consequences. Maltreatment causes stress that is associated with disruption in early brain development. Extreme stress can impair the development of the nervous and immune systems. Consequently, as adults, maltreated children are at risk for behavioral, physical, mental health problems such as perpetuating uh, or perpetrating or being a victim of violence, so becoming another vic- a victim, just a re-victimized, right? Or being the, the actual abuser, because just like I was just talking about, the, the cycle of abuse, right? Um, or just becoming another victim in another relationship, always the victim, um, re-victimized. That's very easy for survivors to be re-victimized. We have to be very careful learning how to set boundaries and how to define what we want out of life and make sure that we stick to it. You know, we want to have an abuse-free life. Well, then we have to make sure that we are we are working on that. Right? Uh, depression. They can they can have all kinds of issues with depression, smoking, obesity high-risk sexual behaviors, unintended pregnancy, alcohol, and drug misuse. And these are just some, right? Via these behavioral and mental health consequences, maltreatment can contribute to heart disease, cancer, suicide, and sexually transmitted infections. And, you know, this is so sad, but it's so true. And my family, I mean, it would be so interesting if, 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 if they could actually do a study on my family because we fit right into this category. And... um you know, minus the sexually transmitted infections, but everything else is there. And it, it's it's very sad what, what this kind of stuff does to people. It's horrible. It destroys people. It destroys their lives. Um, and if they pass it on, it'll destroy their children's lives and their children's lives unless people stop the cycle of of, uh, of abuse and get some help, right, to treat their whatever the issues are, right, which is what I'm always doing, which is a lot of self-help. And I also um, was working with a, a online group support for a while, and, um, you know, that's mainly what I've done. But uh, our family needed help way back when I was a toddler. Before I was even born, my family needed help, you know. And it's really, really sad. Risk factors. A number of risk factors for child maltreatment have been identified. 
These risk factors are not present in all social and cultural contexts, but they provide an they provide an overview when attempting to understand the causes of maltreatment of child maltreatment. So they're just they're not in, in every social and cultural context, but they just give people an idea of what the risk factors are. So for the child, it is important to emphasize that children are the victims and are never to blame for maltreatment. How could a child be to blame for being abused? I mean, come on. People like to, to blame their kids and say, oh, it's your fault. Look what you're making me do. Hey, I'm talking as a survivor, right? Um, you know, you know. quite often the abusers will blame the children. Well, if you weren't this way, I wouldn't have to treat you this way. Or it's or it's your fault or whatever. They're blaming the kids all the time. And so many times um, children will take it on, it, even if they aren't told that it's their fault. They'll just somehow assume that it is because they'll be like, well, you know, I wonder why my, my mommy or daddy doesn't love me and they're always... Um, they treat me like this. Maybe it's because I'm a bad kid. See, so there's all kinds of stuff behind it. But whatever it is, children are never to blame for maltreatment. Never, never, never. Um, abuse is the abuser's choice, and they choose to do it. A number of characteristics of an individual child may increase the the likelihood of being maltreated. For instance, being either under four years old or an adolescent, being unwanted or failing to fulfill the expectations of parents having special needs, crying persistently, or having abdominal, or I'm sorry, abnormal physical features. So, yeah, if there's something wrong with the child, they they have a um, disability of some type or special needs or, um, or you know, maybe mentally or disabled or challenged um, in any way, that can cause parents to lash out at their children out of due to stress. They just don't know how to cope. Uh, a child being unwanted, you know, that's my case. I was not wanted, and, and so therefore I was abused. Um, I was born out of rape, so that's the whole issue. Uh, being unwanted or failing to fulfill the expectations of parents, uh, being either under four years old or an adolescent. So this is the case. Very, very sad. A parent or caregiver, a number of characteristics of a parent or caregiver may increase the risk of child maltreatment. These include... Uh, difficulty bonding with the newborn, not nurturing the child, having been maltreated themselves as a child, lacking awareness of child development or having unrealistic expectations, misusing alcohol or drugs, including during pregnancy, being involved in criminal activity and experiencing financial difficulties. So just not being able to bond with the newborn baby, that was, you know, that, that in my case, that's my mom's case, not nurturing the child, that's that's what happened. Um, having been maltreated themselves as a child, that's both my parents, you know. Um, lacking awareness of child development or having unrealistic expectations, that's my parents. They were both very born very ignorant in 1920s, and their parents were ignorant, and it was just ignorance all the way back, right? Misusing alcohol or drugs, including during pregnancy. Now, that my mom didn't do. Um, being involved in criminal activity, no. My parents were not involved in criminal activity. Uh, their children were, but not, not not my parents. My parents' only criminal activity was abusing their children, which was a crime, and, and they should have been arrested. And um, they were actually brought up on charges, and they should have been arrested. But they weren't arrested, and we were allowed to stay in the home, so it's really too bad. Uh, they were told to get court ordered counseling which they did they only went twice and then we moved out of the country we moved and so we were out of sight out of mind experiencing financial difficulties that that's one that uh, is you know sadly enough parents use that for a sad excuse to abuse their family members right whether it's each other or the children and just due to stress and you know hey punch a pillow don't punch your child you know and don't yell and scream at them because you're broke you know and hey it's it's probably not your fault if it if the factory closed down, definitely wouldn't be your fault. But it's not your child's fault either. So that's why a financial difficulty thing that just doesn't fly with me. There's no excuse for abuse, period. And, um, you know, it's just wrong. It's all wrong. We have to stop child abuse. We have to do all we can to stop child abuse. So we'll finish this article up on Friday. You can check it out, www.who.int.mediacenter. Uh, and it's called Who uh, Child Maltreatment. It's uh, It's number 150. So it's it's a, a fact sheet, fact sheet number 150. But there's so much more here. There's like relationship stuff, community and societal factors, uh, prevention, and then they go on to talk a, a little bit more about the WHO response. So we'll finish that up on Friday um, and probably talk a little bit about domestic violence as this October is the uh, National Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the United States. And so at least I think it's just in the United States, but I'm not sure. 
might be around the world, but um, I know for sure it's in the States. So we'll probably talk a little bit about that as well. So have a great night, everybody. I'll be back on tomorrow morning with one child abuse survivor to another. And make sure you just take care of yourselves. Have a great night. And if I can, you know, if, if you need any of the resources or links that I've been talking about, make sure you get a hold of me. I've got them all. Um, and um, just take care of yourselves and have a really great night. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I almost have 12,000 shows listened to right now, and I really appreciate it all the people who are listening to my archives. I know I'm on at the weirdest times of the day. and uh, I thank everybody for tuning in to my shows and, and catching my shows. Um, your support means everything to me. And, um, you know, it's it's. I never. I didn't know how long I'd be doing Blog Talk Radio, so it's almost been a year. So thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Have a great night. Bye-bye.